we're starting the first topic of mechanic which is going to be uh, motion velocity and acceleration okay so from all of us we're familiar with this formula speed is equals to distance by time in mechanics this is written as s equals vt where s is the distance so moving forward, S would mean the distance, not the speed. T is the time. And this is the speed or the velocity. Okay. Now this formula, S is equals to VD or speed is equals to distance over time is used when the speed is constant. Speed V is constant. Only then this formula is used. If the speed is not constant and instead the acceleration is constant, if acceleration is constant instead, Then you use the following formulas. Okay. These formulas are V square V is equals to U plus AT. S is equals to UT plus half AT square. S is equals to VT minus half AT square. S equals half U plus VT and V square equals U square plus TAS. Now, u here is the initial speed. V is going to be the final speed. A is the acceleration. T is the time. Okay, and S is the distance. Okay. Let's write down the units. Initial oh, speed. Ma'am, ये लिखने? जी जी लिखने. Mechanics के formulas. Okay, this would be meters per second. Again, final speed. Acceleration is meters per second square. It's also written like this, ms minus two, ms minus one, and ms power minus one. Okay, time is seconds and distance is meters. So these are the SI units. Okay. Remember these formulas are only used when the acceleration is constant and the movement is on the straight line. If acceleration is constant and movement is on the straight line, is in straight line. All of these are called equations of motion. Let me say the bird जी बेटा लिखें। These are your notes. These are your class notes. 
ये कौन था रहा यहाँ तो अच्छा दाऊद ने पूछा ओके इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन का मतलब है ये सारे उसके फॉर्मूलाज हैं ऑल दिस फॉर्मूलाज यस ये वर्ड प्रॉब्लम्स में डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हाट्स गिवन टू यू यू हैव टू यूज वन ऑफ दिस वी प्रैक्टिस दोस वर्ड प्रॉब्लम्स राइट नाउ लेट मी ओपन द क्वेश्चंस डॉक्यूमेंट जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड In the meantime, you copy all of these notes. Okay, so here's a question from the book. Okay, this is a picture of the scanned. page of the books it's not going to be that clear but i'm going to send you the document as well which would be slightly clearer okay so the question is starting from rest there's information in almost every statement starting from rest that means that you know the initial speed of movement which is going to be zero and how do we represent initial speed here in the equations of motion u so u is given u is going to be zero so u is zero so let's write that down u is zero okay next is an aircraft accelerates to its takeoff speed of 6 meters per second so this is the latest speed so final speed v is equals to 60 meters per second final speed is represented by v in a distance of 900 meters so you're also given s the distance 900 meters assuming constant acceleration like we said these formulas the equations of motion only work when the acceleration is constant okay find how long the take off run lasts that means you are being asked for the time how long does the take off run last so if the aircraft starts at u is equals to 0 speed is equals to 0 and the final speed is v is equals to 60 the distance covered in the meantime is 900 meters then how long does it take for this to happen so which of the 1 2 3 4 5 formulas should we use here that needs u v and s and that will give us t let me label them for convenience 1 2 3 4 Five. Which one should we use? No, four. Four. It has distance. Yes, we have distance. It has u. We have u. It has v, and it has t. Yes. So it's going to be the fourth one. Can you apply the values? Can you substitute the values in the fourth formula and tell me what time comes out to be? S equals. Half u plus v times t, so nine hundred equals half zero plus sixty times t. So what should be the value of t?
Ma'am, thirty. Oh yes, thirty seconds. Correct. I hope everybody got the same answer. Okay. Next question is question seven from the book I'm following. Not that the question number matters. Here's the second question. Which is the balloon at a height of 300 meters is descending at uh, 10 meters per second. Let me draw a balloon. It's most likely a hot air balloon. Or maybe a regular balloon, I'm not sure. Okay. So it, it, it is at a height of 300 meters so from the ground. So this is 300 meters. is descending at 10 meters per second. So U, since it's going down, it's descending. So the initial speed is 10 meters per second. Okay. And decelerating at a rate of 0.4 meters per second, six, per second squared. Since it says decelerating, so we're going to write A equals negative 0 0.4 meters per second square. Deceleration means that the speed is decreasing. How long will it take? So that means we have to find T for the balloon to stop descending. Okay, let's stop here. So how long does it take for the balloon to stop descending? Stop descending means that it stops moving down. If it stops moving down, that means its final speed is going to be zero. That means it stops going down. That means it stays where it is. So the final speed is zero. Now, which of the five formulas should we be using here? Something that has U, S, A, T, and also V in it. Um, second. Yeah, I think there are more than one options because now you have four parameters. If you have three parameters, it's probably one of these five formulas that is applicable. But now you have so much information, you can actually use more than one formulas. So you're saying the second one, let's see. Uh, whoa, S is equal to VT minus half AT squared. Half AT squared, okay. That would also work, but also the first one would work. I mean the second one, because you also have U, which is 10. Okay. And what else would work? The last one will work as well. Because yes. it has V in it, it has U in it, it has A and S in it. But no, we need to give time we need to find the value of time. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Balke, nahi, hold on. We do not have the distance here. The distance S is the distance from ground. That is different. So let's say the ground is way further down. So the balloon stops moving at a height above the ground. It doesn't say that it stops moving when it hits the ground. So this uh, balloon stops moving here. You have to find the time at which this balloon stops moving. And the distance S is actually this distance from here to the ground. So S is not 300. So we cannot use a formula that is S in, S in it because we're only talking about this part of the movement. From here to here. Here, U is 10 because we're told that the initial speed is 10. Deceleration is 0.4, so acceleration is minus 0.4. Time is what we have to find, and 
we have to find the time till which the uh, the balloon stops decelerating. That means it stops moving. So V is equals to zero. So how much time has passed in which the balloon changes its speed from 10 to zero? So we have to find that time. S is not part of this equation. So now if you have U, you have A, you have V, and you have to find T, which one of these five equations is applicable? First one. Hmm. V is equals to U plus A. Okay. Let's apply that. V equals U plus A T. Zero equals ten minus zero point four T. So zero point four T equals ten. T equals ten upon zero point four, which will be twenty five. Okay, 25 seconds. So in 25 seconds, the balloon speed goes from 10 to zero while it's decelerating at 0.4 meters per second. Okay, the next part says, and what will be the height? What will be its height? And what will its height be then? So what would be its height? That means you need to find this distance. What is this distance? So the total distance is 300. You need to find the this distance. You'll find this distance by finding the distance in this region first. And then we will subtract that from 300. So we know this is 300 from here till here. And we have enough information to find distance in this region. And then we subtract it from 300 and we get the height of the balloon. Okay, so let's see. Now we also have the time. So you can also add that here. So time is 25. How much distance has lapsed? in this region. So we can use more than one formulas because now we have four parameters. So I need a formula that gives me the distance. I could use what? Something that has U, A, T in it and give and also or could have V in it and gives us S. I'm going to use this one. It equals to UT plus. plus half AT square. That's also fine. Okay, let's use that. So if we're using S equals UT plus half AT square, so it's going to be S equals 10 times 25 plus half minus 0 0.4, 25 square. What does this give us? So what do we get? 125. 125, okay. And then you do 300 minus 125. 175. 175 meters. Is it yay, Bola? Okay. Okay, next question. Okay, 
question. We should we write down the question too? Yeah, ye nahin, sheet nahin. Mein aa jayega. Nahin, I'll send you the document that has these questions. Okay. Maybe write down like the first two, three words. Because I'm not having you write the question number either. Just write the first two, three lines. And now I've copied the question number so you can write it down. Or let me just tell you the question numbers quickly. The very first question we did was question number five. Then we did seven. And now we're doing another seven. Okay, never mind. Just write down. These are from different exercises. So just write down the first few lines, just the first few words. So a downhill skier, just write that. Okay. A downhill skier crosses the finishes line at a speed of 30 meters per second. So there's a ski place and he's going downwards or was going downwards and then the speed at the finish line, let's say this is the finish line. Here's the finish line. When he crosses the finishes line, the speed is 30. Okay. And immediately starts to decelerate at 10 meters per second. So A is 10 meters per second square. There is a barrier 50 meters beyond the finish line. So there's a barrier somewhere over here which is 50 meters beyond the finish line. So this distance would be 50 meters. Find an expression for the skier's speed. So when she is S meters beyond the finish line. Okay, so we're going to call this the initial speed. 30 is the initial speed as soon as she finish, crosses the finish line. We need to write an expression when she is S meters beyond the finish line. Okay, so let's say she is over here. So this is S meters and the speed here will be V. So we need an expression for V. So which one of the formulas has V, S, U and A in it? Minus is equals to V T minus half A T square. That one needs time, and there's no mention of time yet. Uh, v square is equals to U square plus two A. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to use V square equals U square plus two A S. So we need to find the expression for V. So V square equals U square is going to be 30 square plus 2 times deceleration was mentioned. So it should be minus 10. So minus 10. And S is the distance covered after the crossing the finishing finish line. So this would be just S. Okay. So we get V square equals 900 minus 20 S. And since you have to make V the subject, so it's going to be square root 900 minus 20. So part A is done. Find an expression for the skier speed when she is S meters beyond the finish line. So if you know S, you can just input it in the equation and get the final speed. At that particular distance. Part B, how fast is she traveling when she is 40 meters beyond the finish line? So you have to find how fast she is traveling. That means the V, the final speed. 
when she is 40 meters beyond the finish line. So this would be the distance from the finish line, which we represented as S earlier. So you already have a formula that connects V and S. So you just substitute 40 in place of S in this formula. So part B would be V equals square root 900 minus 20 S is 40. What do we get? And ten. Twelve. Ten. 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 Yeah, ten is correct. Ten meters per second. Okay. Next is how far short of the barrier does she come to stop? Okay. So when she stops, how far away is she from the barrier? So when she stops, we know V is 0. So U is 30. S is uh, question mark. A is minus 10. And V is 0. So which equation of motion do we use that uses uh, U, A, and V and gives us S? Yeah. And S equals to half U plus V multiplied by T. The we don't have T here. I haven't entered T here. And part C is data. V square is equal to U square plus 2S. Haji. So V square equals U square plus 2S would work. V square equals U square plus 2AS. Because you have V, which is 0, 0 squared, equals 30 squared plus 2 times minus 10 times S. So find S from here. This becomes 900. Move 20 S to the other side. So S would be 45. So how far short of the barrier does she come to stop? So, what is the distance between the barrier and where she has stopped? The barrier is here and she has stopped here and she has covered a distance of 45. So then how much distance is left till she hits the barrier? It's going to be 50 minus 45, which is five meters. Part T. Display uh, what is that? SV graph. S is the distance, V is the speed to illustrate the motion. Okay. So we already have an equation connecting V and S. Now we have to represent this graphically. So for part D, What do we know from the question? You have to write S and V. S is going to be the x-axis because it says S comma V. So distance is on the x-axis. And what is the unit? Meters. And V is going to be on the y-axis. The unit is meters per second. So from the dis question, we know that when there's no distance covered, the speed is 30. So when there's no distance covered, the speed is 30. And then when it stops, see, then the distance covered is 45.
So the distance should be 45 and speed should be zero. So somewhere over here. Now we have to draw a proper graph. Now, since this is square root, remember square root is a curve. Square root goes like this. So this is going to be a curve as well, which is going like this. So don't end up making a linear line between 45 and 30. Make a curve length. Okay, what's next? Okay. I'm going to give you a few questions as homework for mechanics. Just two questions as homework. Okay, so that, well, okay, there's five more minutes. Let me do a couple before we start the pre one homework corrections. Okay, so the question is, a boy kicks a football up the slope with a speed of 6 meters per second. Okay, so there's a slope and a football is going up and the speed, the initial speed is 6 meters per second. The ball decelerates at 0.3 meters per second square. That means A equals minus 0 0.3 meters per second square. How far up the slope does it roll? So you need to give this distance how far up does it roll so when it is at its highest point let's say it's here what should be the speed here when the ball reaches its highest point like if this uh, ball is changing its direction it's going up then it reaches its maximum height and then it starts coming down. So when it reaches its maximum height, it momentarily stops. Only then it will change the direction if it stops at some point. So when the boy kicks a football and it reaches its maximum height, then the final speed is always zero. This is also true for a ball that you might throw up in the air to catch it. So, when it goes, when it is at its maximum height, its speed momentarily becomes zero and then it starts coming back. So, now tell me which equation of motion are we going to use that uses u, a, and v and gives us s? v mm, e squared is equal to u squared plus 2s. v squared equals u square plus 2s. Yes, looks like it. So, b square equals u square plus 2as. v is 0. Equals 6 square plus 2 times minus 0 0.3s. So, can you tell me what is s equals to after rearranging? I'm getting 60. Yes, ma'am. Take a 60 meters. Okay. So that's all for mechanics. I'm going to ask you to do just one or two questions maximum at home so that you know 
get an idea of which equation is applied in which uh, case. Okay, so you will have some mechanics homework and some pure homework today. I'm going to send you guys a new link now for P1 class.